Hello everybody, this is Brendan at the Common Motor Collective. That's common-motor.com on the internet. Today we're going to be doing uh, a bench synchronization and cable synchronization for Honda CB350 carburetors. Um, people ask me this question a lot, how do I synchronize these carbs? So we're going to show you how to do that. Um, also this applies to the Honda 450 carburetors because they operate the same way with a one cable split into two. Uh, each carburetor is operated independent. So uh, it's really simple to do but it's very important to keep the carburetor synchronized so you get nice even power throughout your RPM band and stable idling. So let's go on the bench here and get these guys bench synced. So before we uh, go ahead and set up the progression synchronization on the uh, bike we're going to talk about the throttle cables because they are a common culprit in getting the synchronization set up properly. So in the middle here we have a pretty worn out sorry uh, 350 uh, throttle cable. It is a split cable design, meaning it's a single cable going in and it splits into two cables to actuate each carburetor individually. What happens over time is these ends here tend to stretch you know, unevenly and it makes getting the sink set up harder. I mean, you have some adjustment, but the older the cable is, the harder it is to adjust. Um, so, new cable here just below it. Uh, ends and everything are nice and even. You're starting out with a kind of a clean slate. Uh, for the 350, that part number is CMC part number 2020. Um, just above it over here, we have a 450 throttle cable. It's almost the exact same setup. Basically, the lengths and, um, are a little bit different for the 450. Again, a one of the two cable, that CMC part number 2026. Along with that, we also find that the nylon throttle tube that you would find in your control box Let's go ahead and take it out of here so you can see it. This guy tends to be kind of worn out and broken or brittle. Uh, so sometimes a brand new throttle tube really helps in keeping everything nice and smooth um, in the process because it's the first input on the throttle. Uh, replacement nylon throttle tubes are part number 2027 um, on the website. So we're going to go ahead and get the new throttle cable installed and a new throttle tube installed and we'll show you what's going on with the progression synchronization on our bike. So a lot of people want to ask me what a what a bench sink is, and so uh, here is the the back of one of our 350 carburetors, and what we have here is our our main butterfly. That uh, this is would be the idle setting, and as you give it gas, the butterfly opens up and lets more gas into the engine. However, we do spend a lot of time with the butterfly in this kind of rest position, which would be the idle speed. So I'm going to rotate the carburetor, and I'm going to point out something to you right here. This is, the screw here is our idle speed screw. Uh, depending on how far it's screwed in or screwed out it determines how wide that butterfly opens up at idle speed and how fast the engine will run. Uh, what I have done so far is I have backed the screw out, and you can see that we have a little gap here between the screw and the stop. So essentially, if I open the screw, or open the butterfly, and release it, the butterfly itself is uh, what's hitting it, hitting inside the carburetor body, not the screw. Obviously, if we tighten the screw down and we push on this, we will cause the butterfly to be open at whatever position. So this is where we're going to make our adjustment to set the bench sync. And I guess what more specifically, instead of being a bench sync, what we're really setting is the idle speed synchronization. We want to make sure the carburetor's butterfly, this guy is open at the same exact position for both carburetors at idle speed so the bike will idle stably. Then we're going to adjust the progressive synchronization so when we are given a gas these butterflies open up together on both carburetors at the same speed and rate and they close at the same speed and rate versus let's say one opening a little bit ahead of the other. We're going to show you uh, another bike that has the carburetors out of sync and uh, so you can see how that looks like. But right now we're going to focus only on the idle speed um, stop sync. If we look really closely inside our butterfly here, as I open it up, we're going to see a couple holes. First of all, you're going to see this big hole here, which is our, our discharge nozzle for our idle speed, or our mixture screw. And then a little bit further in, you're going to see two little tiny holes right next to each other. These are also uh, Fuel, uh, feed screw, or fuel feed holes for the idle speed, but as the butterfly shuts, they're kind of covered up, and so basically we're going to find a position where we just have it open a little bit, and we're going to feed uh, 
the fuel will feed out. But we're also going to use these two holes as a place to put our basically our feeler gauge or what we're going to use to set the thickness or set the, uh, the stop. Let me just show you. This is going to be easier than me talking about it. My main tool here I'm going to use is a guitar string. Um, this is, I don't know, like a 9 or 10 gauge guitar string. It's stainless steel and it has a very consistent thickness to it. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the butterfly. I'm going to put the guitar string in here and I'm going to try to position the string kind of right in between those two little screws, or little air holes. Or holes just like that. Can you see that? Just like that. I just want to make sure I put the string in the same spot every time. Now the string is being pinched by the butterfly and if I tug on it, it's not going anywhere. So from this point, I'm going to take my flathead screwdriver and I'm going to tighten up the screw right here until I just find the spot where the string wants to pull out. So I'm putting some pressure on it and let me go ahead and start tightening up the screw. Actually, I'm not going to get anywhere yet until I get it. Let me bring it up a little bit. So I'll just see it start to touch. Screwdriver is too short. Let's try that one. See how we're getting closer and closer? Alright, it's starting to touch there. Alright, let's find the spot. So I'm going to hold, pull on this, and actually, Yanni, will you hold the carburetor? But it's just going to hold it. It doesn't move. Perfect. Extra set of hands help. So I'm putting some pressure here on this guitar string. Now I'm slowly going to tighten this screw up until I find the spot where the guitar string just pulls out. Oh, it's getting close, right there. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to flip the carburetor over. Alright, that's my, uh, that's the spot I'm wanting to leave. Now, it's really important that I don't touch the screw again. That's it, the, the sink is set. In fact, and a way to keep it um, in order is I'm going to take my magic marker and I'm going to color one side of the screw here, like that. So any adjustment we make to the carburetor from here on during idle for both the left and right carburetor, um, this one happens to be the, uh, the right hand carburetor, we have to turn this screw the same exact amount. So if the, the engine is idling too slow, Maybe you turn this screw one half turn and one half turn. Exactly. Um, not approximately exactly because our position is based on uh, our, uh, our gap we left with the, the wire. So if you're too fast, um, you can bring it down and say a quarter turn, quarter turn. You're going to do equal increments on either carburetor as you adjust it from here on out because now we have a very fixed, fixed width this guy is open up. So we'll do the other carburetor. And then we're going to show you how to do the, uh, um, the cable sink or the progression sink. Okay, so what you're looking at right now is we're zoomed in on the, where the throttle cable hooks to each one of the carburetors left and right on a 350. Uh, the 450 has a very, very similar setup. And while we just did the bench sink, which set the idle position, so the rest position, what we're going to do now is look at the progression synchronization so basically how the carburetors open and close and this one is way out what I'm going to do is slowly open the throttle and you're going to see that one side opens up first and the other side comes watch so our left side's opening up and then the right side's opening up so what that means is from here to here that left hand carburetor is already that far open before the right hand carburetor even starts to move which is off so we want them to be opening at the same exact time no matter what. So this, this sink is off. So if you were to give it gas, that left carburetor and the left cylinder starts working and then the right one kicks in later. Also, as you're slowing down, you know, the right one will slow down first and then the left one catches up with it. So our adjustment is made at the cable, a little bit higher up by the carburetor. And uh, basically you have to get it adjusted so they both open at the same time. So that's a good example of what we mean by the progression synchronization is off. So at idle, they're at the same position, but as we move forward, 
they're off. So we'll get them right. So our synchronization adjustment on this bike is going to be done with these two um, cable adjusters right here. And since we knew that this carburetor was the one that was opening first and this one was opening second, we're going to adjust um, this cable. Uh, I like to take my, uh, my Sharpie and I'll color a side here, much like we did on the screw, just as a reference so I know how many times I've turned that screw uh, when making the adjustment. That's all. So uh, 10 millimeter wrench and we'll take out the lock nut and we'll make our adjustment. Like that. And well, check. All right. We'll, we'll make the adjustment until we get it right. Back the screw out and then uh, we'll check and we'll see. We'll show you what happens when it's done. Okay. Our sink is set. So as we roll the throttle on, you'll see that both of them move at the same exact time. They both drop at the same time as we close them. So that would mean that these carburetors are now in not only idle uh, position sync, but also a progression sync. So they open up at the same rate as you're going down the road. And uh, that's it. So this bike is ready to roll.